Hello everyone, Dr. Ominde again. So this time we're going to discuss about the perineum. So the perineum is the region uh, bordered by the pubic symphysis anteriorly, as well as the ischial pubic rema. Posteriorly, we have the coccyx and laterally the ischial tuberosities and sacrotuberous ligament. The pelvic diaphragm separates the main pelvic cavity above from the perineum below. And the perineum is divided into two triangles by a line joining the two ischial tuberosities. So you have an anal triangle posteriorly and a urogenital triangle anteriorly. So that's the ischial tuberosities. We said the perineum is from pubic arc, ischial pubic rema, ischial tuberosity, and the coccyx. So this is the, the perineum. And if you join the two ischial tuberosities, you have a urogenital triangle and an anal triangle posteriorly. So urogenital triangle has the labia, the urethra, the opening of the vagina. This is female. And uh, in male, you have the uh, penis, and the urogenital triangle. And the anal triangle has the anal canal. So the anal triangle is bordered by the coccyx and the two ischial tuberosities. So the coccyx and the two ischial tuberosities, it's a triangle, contains sacrotuberous ligaments, the inner surrounded by external anal sphincter, and the ischiorectal fossa, whose base is directed on the surface of the perineum and the apex at the junction between obturator and anal fascia. The urogenital triangle is bordered anteriorly by pubic arc and the two ischial tuberosities posteriorly. And in female, contains external genitalia and the openings of the urethra and vagina, while in the males, it contains the penis and the scrotum. Superficial fascia of the urogenital triangle has two layers. We have the campus, which is fatty layer and it's external. It continues forward into the scrotum as datus muscle, which usually elevates the scrotum. And also, we have the collus fascia, which is the membranous deep layer that continues, uh, is continuous with the uh, membranous layer of the scrotum and labia majora. Uh, fibrous sheath of the penis and clitoris, and also the scapus fascia of the anterior abdominal wall. The pelvic diaphragm has, is made up of lobeta ani and coccygeous muscles. The coccygeous is continuous with iliococcygeous muscle and forms the, uh, the posterior smaller part of the pelvic diaphragm. It originates from pelvic surface of the ischial spine and sacrospinous ligament, and it starts on the lateral margin of S5 vertebra in the coccyx. It usually supports the, the coccyx. So again, um, this is the coccygeous muscle. Okay, so we have said originates from pelvic surface of ischial spine and sacrospinous ligament and it starts on the lateral margin of, of S5. So that's the ischial spine here and it starts on the coccyx at that point. So that's coccygeous. Then we have the levator uh, ani muscle. Levator ani originates from pelvic surface okay, of the body of pubis, tendinous arc which is thickening of parietal and pelvic fascia of obturator internus here, and then the ischial spine. So those are the three origins. Pelvic surface of body of pubis, tendinous arc, and ischial spine, and inserts onto the central tendon of perineum, the wall of anal canal, okay, that's the anal canal, and the anal ligament, and the coccyx. So this is the levator ani, and it's made up of pubococcygeus. So all this is levator ani, pubococcygeus, iliococcygeus muscle. So it's made up of pubococcygeus from the pubis to the coccyx from the word pubococcygeus and this usually encircles the urethra vagina and the anus and merges to the central perineal tendon. Puborectalis forms a sling between the rectum and the anus while you have the levator prostate in males which is uh, which forms the pubovaginalis in females. So again uh, pubococcygeus, iliococcygeus from levator ana then then that's coccygeous muscle. So together they form the pelvic diaphragm. So this is the pelvic diaphragm again. That's your pubovaginalis in females, puborectalis at the anorectal junction. Then you have the pubococcygeous, iliococcygeous. So all this form levator ani, and then we have the coccygeous muscle. So this is the pelvic diaphragm. Again, iliococcygeous, pubococcygeous, and the coccygeous muscle. So the levator ani gives support to pelvic viscera. It raises the pelvic floor Okay, if you want, uh, in cases of valsava, valsava maneuver is they were coughing, sneezing, whereby uh, there's a raised abdominal pressure. So the levator ana helps to raise the pelvis to increase the abdominal pressure and also supports the pelvis during valsava. 
It supports the prostate and vagina and provides enteric action. Puborectalis holds an erectile junction anteriorly increasing the angulation between rectus and anum. So it really um, prevents defecation when it's not desired. Then there is the levator ana facilitates rotation of baby's head during parturition. So this just shows you a tear of the levator ana during parturition. And the pelvic diaphragm made up of levator ana and coccygeus are usually perforated by the anus, urethra, and the vagina. So the superficial perineal space is formed by superficial perineal fascia inferiorly and inferior fascia of your genital diaphragm superiorly. It contains the root of penis, muscles of the penis like bubble spongiosus and ischial cavernosus, spongy urethra, uh, branches of internal pedendal vessels and pedendal nerve, as well as superficial uh, transverse perineal muscles. So this here is the superficial pouch, then the deep pouch is here. So superficial pouch uh, between the superficial perineal fascia and the inferior fascia of the deep pouch. Okay, then the deep uh, pouch is between superior fascia and inferior fascia of the deep pouch. Again, this is the deep pouch of the perineal space, this superficial perineal space. So superficial is from membranous layer of superficial fascia, which is called less fascia, to the inferior fascia of the uh, deep pouch, okay, of the urogenital diaphragm. And then the deep pouch is between superior and inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. Uh, so this is the deep pouch here between superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and inferior while the um, superficial space is between the membranous or coalesced fascia and the inferior fascia of the, of the urogenital diaphragm so the deep perineal space is enclosed by superior and inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm it contains filter urethra deep transverse perineal muscles bulbo urethral glands membranous urethra internal pedendal vessels and branches of pedendal nerve. So between superficial uh, fascia of the urogenital diaphragm and the deep fascia, so superior and inferior fascia, and then it contains, so that is our bulbo-urethral gland. You can see branches of internal pedendal vessels and pedendal nerve and the deep transverse perineal muscle. Then that's the membranous part of the, of the urethra. And this is a superficial pouch. This is a superficial pouch. So central tendon of perineum is a fibrous septum um, between extending from the posterior labial commissure of the scrotal raphe to anal region. And usually we have the four muscles that attach onto the central tendon of perineum, levator ani, external anal sphincter, deep and superficial transverse perineal muscles and bulbous spongiosus muscle. Central tendon of perineum just gives integrity to the perineum and it can be badly torn if parturition or delivery is not aided. So again, these are, this is the central tendon of perineum, which is also called the perineal body. So you have the bulbo, uh, bulbo cavernosus muscle here and ischial cavernosus muscles. Okay, ischial cavernosus, bulbo cavernosus, and you can see the superficial and deep transverse, they come and insert here. That's the anal canals, so where the external anal sphincter will also insert into the perineum. Tendon. This is the perineal tendon here. This is the anus. So that's bulbo, uh, bulbo cavernosus, ischial cavernosus, bulbo uh, spongiosus, ischial cavernosus. That's the anal canal. So we have the ischial anal fossa. Ischial anal fossa is uh, bordered laterally by ischium and inferior part of obturator internus, medially by rectum, anal canal, levator, ani muscles posteriorly by sacrotuberous ligament and gluteus maximus, anteriorly by base of urogenital diaphragm, inferiorly by skin and deep fascia of perineum, while the apex is between the obturator fascia and levator ani. So this is the uh, estuorectal fossa, estuoranal, sorry, estuoranal fossa here. This is the estuoranal fossa. So we've said um, laterally it's bordered by, this is the ischium and the obturator internus and its fascia. Then on the medial aspect, you have the rectum, anus, and the levator ani muscle. Then inferiorly, you have the skin here, and the apex is between the obturator internus and levator ani muscle. So again, laterally, ischium and inferior part of obturator internus, ischium and obturator internus. Medially, rectum, anal canal, levator ani, rectum, anal canal, levator ani, and external anal sphincter. Posteriorly, by sacrotuberous and gluteus maximus, 
anteriorly by basal bridge into diaphragm, inferiorly by skin and deep fascia, okay, and apex by levator ana meeting of jurita internus. It contains a lot of fibrous uh, fat or septa with a uh, fat pad, and these usually dis uh, support the anal canal, and these fat pads are displaced to allow feces to pass. This is the ischial anal fossa. It also contains, apart from part, fat pad, it contains internal pedendal vessels, pedendal nerve, um, inferior rectal vessels and nerves, perforating branches of S2 and S3 nerves, and perineal branch of S4. So again, this is the ischiorectal fossa with the pedendal vessels and rectal, inferior rectal vessels and nerves, and pedendal, internal pedendal vessels and pedendal nerves. And you can see here, within the pedendal, this in green is a pedendal, Okay, this is the ischial anal fossa. So damage to the pelvic diaphragm can lead uh, can lead to an, uh, during an assisted delivery or episiotomy can lead to tear of the pelvic diaphragm and weakening of the pel uh, weakening the support of the pelvic viscera. So you can get cystocy where herniation of the urinary bladder urethro uh, cystic urethrocele where both urinary bladder and urethra herniate, rectocele where the rectum herniates, uterine prolapse herniation of the uterus. And you can get stress incontinence during valsava because of impaired support of the urethra and anorectal junction. So when somebody sneezes, the fecal matter or urine comes out. That's what we call stress incontinence. So damage to the pelvic diaphragm can lead to herniation of viscera and stress incontinence. You can get abscess or pus collection in the istroanal fossa. That could be due to infection in the anus, extension from the pelvic rectal abscess, or tear of the anal mucosa or penetrating wound in the anal region. Pedendal canal, I showed you pedendal canal in the other slide. This is the pedendal canal. It's on the lateral wall of the istroanal fossa. Mm -hmm. It contains branches of pedendal vessels and pedendal nerve. Pedendal nerve block is usually offered at this place to relieve pain in the perineum during episiotomy or other operations in the perineum. So you give a local anesthetic, you inject around the tissues surrounding the pedendal nerve in the pedendal canal. And usually it's you in, uh, done at the lateral aspect of sarcospinous ligament near the attachment of the ischial spine because that's where the pedendal nerve courses. So that's the site around the attachment of sarcospinous ligament near the ischial spine. That's where you give your local anesthetic to block the pedendal nerve within uh, the pedendal canal. Thank you very much.